Good evening. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Hope we're all well. Hope you've all had a good weekend. Uh, thanks for catching up on replay. For those of you who joined, thanks for checking it out. And uh, for those of you that are joining, I hope you've had a great weekend. Let me just invite some people. Let me just invite some people. Here we go. Oh, sorry. Again, I'm going to say I wish Facebook had an invite all button so I didn't have to spend 30 seconds waiting. So yeah, if you are catching up on replay, feel free to skip 30 seconds or 40 seconds. Get a few of these going. So yeah, I hope we've had a good weekend. I have uh, spent the day at my little niece's christening, little Scarlet, which was lovely. There, that'll do. That'll do. A few invites sent. There we go. Who is on? There we go. Got a few people on. Yeah, so um, happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. Um, and to those fathers that aren't with you, then I um, hope the thoughts are obviously with them. And I hope that it, um, yeah, had some nice memories. There we go, a few people on. So today is episode three of the Always Better Than Yesterday interview sessions. <laughs> nice shirt, thank you. My dad made a comment today that his dress sense had finally worn off on me and I thought that's the point when uh, then I realised that it's all downhill from here. Um, so yeah, this is episode three of the Always Better Than Yesterday um, sessions and interview sessions and for those of you that haven't joined, it is my opportunity to ask people that inspire me um, a series of questions. I'm, I'm kind of nosy and I like to get into uh, kind of how people work and how they think and all the sort of habits that they've developed. And I thought rather than do that for myself, then I would um, do that in front of everybody and, and allow you in to, to learn that too. So if it's not for you, Feel free to um, feel free to leave. I won't take it personally. But if it is for you, get involved. Um, ask some questions. Um, if you're nosy and or or you're intrigued by um, by Michael and his view um, and his experience, then then do get involved and ask some questions. I'm going to bring him up shortly, um, and, and I won't introduce him too much because I'll allow him to do that. Um, I'll allow him to do that. Um, but yeah, feel free to share this if it adds you any value um, and I'm going to bring him on now. Here we go, I'm going to find him. Right, Michael, make sure your phone is landscape. Here we go, I'm going to add him. Evening, Anna. Who else have we got on? James, Chris, Danny, Paul, great to see you guys. Thank you for joining. Christina, Bez, Bethan, Dawn. Awesome, got some good people on. Here we go. Yeah. How are you? <laughs> How's it, Ryan? How are you doing? Can you see me properly? Very here? well, man. Sitting in my lounge here. <laughs> good to see you. Yeah. you. Had a good weekend. Happy Father's Day to all of you and your wonderful people in your group. Thank Great you. To be Thank here. you. Absolutely amazing to be here. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to connect with all of you. Amazing. Yeah, I actually so quite, uh, I'm quite excited to be here because I almost wasn't here because, you know, down in South Africa here, we have what they call load shedding, which means that uh, every now and then they just decide to switch the electricity off. You know, it's hell in Africa. Right, right. <laughs> and yeah, that's yeah. just because, you know, the grid's overloaded. So they, they choose a time and they just switch it off. If we lose you, <laughs> no, you won't lose me now. If, if, it, if it's not off, it actually went off earlier. But uh, if it's not off again now, then we're all good. <laughs> Amazing, right? Mm. So do do me the pleasure of introducing your fine self to the the people that are watching, and they're going to catch up on replay. Okay, excellent. Well, my name is Michael Rod, as you know. Uh, I'm a peak performance, or I call myself a peak performance life coach. Uh, I live on the east coast of South Africa with my beautiful wife and my little five-year-old daughter, Rachel. And so, um, happy you too. Mm, um, I actually lived in I lived in London for a while. Uh, my sister, with my sister Jenny Rivet, who is uh, who was Princess Diana's personal fitness trainer right up until her tragic and untimely death. Um, 
Wow. So I lived with her for a while and uh, then I traveled to the United States and I lived there for six years where I studied, uh, you know, my uh, coaching career has a very strong base in health and wellness. And uh, yes. I, I traveled from England to the United States to study health and wellness. So I got a degree in exercise physiology. And then I uh, came back to South Africa and I, I started a coaching career really that just um, evolved. You know, my story is, uh, I have quite a, a beautiful story, I must admit. It's a story of uh, tragedy and triumph. And, okay. uh, you know, as most, most coaches uh, in life, they come from a background of hardship, you know, of, of struggle, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I think, you know, I, I developed a love, an absolute passion for people when I was very young because, unfortunately, I had an alcoholic mother and uh, mm -hmm. I was witness to her, uh, you know, her many attempts at trying to take her life. Mm. And I think, uh, you know, that, that started me on a journey of just really wanting to know what this life's all about. And on top mm. of that, I, uh, I embarked on this bodybuilding uh, career because, you know, I, I, yeah, I really just wanted to, you know, from the hurt of, you know, I'm really, I'm, 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 t I'm telling you my story here. So. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Thank you. I appreciate you know, it. Appreciate um, it. The hurt of, of that, I, now I know we've all got a story, but this is my story, mm. so I hope you'll just bear with me. So, you know, the, the hurt of, of, of witnessing yeah. all of that when I was young, I tried to insulate myself by, by, by uh, you know, embarking on this journey of bodybuilding so, so that, um, you know, the world, the world wouldn't attack me anymore. You know, I'd, I'd feel safe and insulated in this big body. And at the same time, have this mm -hmm. uh, um, idea of being a perfect, so no one could criticize me. If you understand? Yeah. So you know that that really was the the foray into this whole wellness and fitness industry that I went on to study in the United States. You know. Um, so so, so just to just to reflect on the, the bodybuilding, mm. what did? Because that's a hell of a discipline. That that's. Um, you know, we we could talk mm. all evening about the the discipline that it must have taken to get yourself in the physical condition that you did. Mm. What did that kind of, what lessons did you take from that mm. in terms of you know, the discipline that it took to to build your body? Well, you know, I find it interesting because, you know, um, that was who I was then, and it was you know, you, you know, I, what I really learned from that whole journey was, you know, everybody's got their own model of the world that they develop through their triumphs mm -hmm. and their tragedies. And that really was just my way of, 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 um, of protecting myself in the world. But it, it led on to greater things. You know, I could have, in that instance, when I was growing up, I could have chosen one of two paths. I could have gone mm -hmm. the delinquent route, or I could have gone this route. And I'm really happy that I, I chose that route. Because it instilled, yeah, and, it, it, it instilled in me a very deep discipline and also a great respect for the human body and, and what it is capable of. And also it, it formed the foundation of my whole peak performance philosophy. Because, do you know what it yeah. was that, that helped you go down that path and not the other one? You know, I, I just think that uh, it was the fight inside of me that just said... Uh, you know, this has happened to me and I'm going to give this a good meaning. I'm not going to interpret this in a way that destroys me. I'm going to try and give this mm. a meaning in my life that empowers me and makes me go forward instead of, uh, you know, instead of uh, taking me in a direction which really just, you know, I'm, you know, some kids, unfortunately, they just, you know, when they're in a situation like that, they choose the wrong mm. road. And just, I'm, I'm mm. actually so blessed that I chose the right road because it formed the foundation of who I was and, and, and how my whole coaching career uh, actually grew. So if you look, yeah, if, if, you look if you look at the, the acronym peak, which is, you know, I'm a, I call myself a peak performance life coach. So many people call themselves a peak performance coach, but for me, that word peak has a, a, a deep meaning. Um, and that's where the P, which stands for physiology, is the base of that whole pyramid. 
so you know my foundation in physiology and training formed that whole um, base so you know that that early experience in bodybuilding and taking myself up to the top 10 position in the world wow was uh was actually you know it's just it was formative and the discipline and you know i mean i had you know arnold schwarzenegger was my boyhood hero and you know, I, you know, it's just a great thing that you you have the opportunity to to emulate people like that. And um, yeah, mm. so uh, so other than the the discipline, what other sort of habits did you develop during your bodybuilding career that really served you well? Well, you know, the learnings that came out of that. Um, obviously, my my bodybuilding and my my training led me on to the first stage of my coaching. Because it taught me fundamentally how your physiology can affect your mindset. Mm -hmm. So um, my whole, as I said to you earlier, the whole basis of my, my, my uh, framework, my peak performance framework yeah. is creating what I call state management based on physiology. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I used to get, uh, when I started coaching, I used to get a lot of people who would come to me and say to me, you know, Michael, I'm so depressed and I just, I can't understand why. And, you know, you could see that they don't have the mental um, condition of being depressed, but they have the physiology of being depressed. Now, right. now you know that there's a, there's a cybernetic loop between mind and body. So one affects the other, the other affects the other. So if you mm. carry yourself in a way that's depressive, in a way that's um, mm. uh, inward, I mean, if you can picture – uh, what a depressed person looks like if you, mm. you know, imagine them, their shoulders are rounded, they're breathing shallow. And so, you know, I learned early in my career that physical training helps people like that specifically yeah. because a weak physiology, a weak, a weak, weak body leads to mm. weak patterns of physiology, which therefore lead to weak mental patterns because of that cybernetic loop. So it was, yeah. you know, that, that was the whole basis of my, well, the whole foundation of my, that, you know. That's interesting because I, I, I can reflect on that. And, you know, last, last year I, I was struggling with some resiliency issues. And yeah. I, um, I started exercising and getting out in the mornings, which was a flip because I used to go out in the evenings. Mm. And, um, yeah, for some reason I just got out early in the morning and I just found that that change, you know, physiologically by moving just – made me clearer throughout the day much more resilient um and able to take on some challenges you know show up and lead and and do all those things that i was having difficulty doing um by being tired in the mornings absolutely now you'll probably know the statement that motion creates emotion emotion yeah absolutely yeah so if you look at the next level of my framework which is the peak Emotion mm -hmm. comes after the P. So you get physiology and how physiology affects your emotional state. So you would have felt that firsthand. Like a good student, I'm taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> good for you. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's, I must say it's been a, it's been a beautiful journey. And, um, I, you know, having been through that with my mother and having gone through that whole that whole um, uh, bodybuilding story and, and learned so much. And I developed this, you know, insatiable, insatiable um, um, mindset where I just hated to see other people struggling emotionally, mm. you know, mm. and I used exercise in the early stages of my life, exercise and training. And I wasn't quite, I didn't quite understand how that worked, but it, that started the whole journey over the last 27 years of me yeah. trying to find out how this whole thing fits together. Mm. And of course, the next part of my framework, which is P for physiology, E for emotion, those two are the first part, which I call the primers. You know, if you get, mm -hmm. you know, you work, your life works from the inside out, not from the outside in. So, yeah. you know, to show up in life, you've got to be fully present and energetic and emotionally strong. So if you've got those two in place, the next part of the framework is A, which is action. You know, you're going to take mm. a much better quality of consistent action if you've got those yes. first two uh, in place. Mm. So Absolutely. Yeah. So with, with action, I think, you know, my learning around action is around 
belief, you know, just taking that action and then not being afraid to fail. What, what do you, um, what's your experience of those two concepts, sort of belief and failure um, around action? Well, first of all, I believe that, well, <laughs> let me say it a different way. The greatest challenge people have is their limiting beliefs about themselves. Mm. Mm. That's, you know, in my whole coaching career, whenever people come to me, that's primarily what we have to break through. If you think yeah. about growing up in life, what you've got to do in life is you've got to grow up and out of your childhood limiting beliefs. Now, mm -hmm. not many people, unfortunately, not many people take the time to revisit those beliefs that no longer serve them in life. You know, they just carry, Absolutely. they carry those and it's a burden yeah. for them, you know, and at some point, at some point they, they reach that, that crisis in their life where, you know, they just, they just can't continue. Yeah, so, I think, I think the one of the, I think one of the main things with limiting beliefs is becoming aware of it, you know, self-awareness, you know, yeah, absolutely. So, mm. so for those people that are watching that are uh, new to coaching mm. or, or, or limiting beliefs, how, you know, what advice would you give them to start trying to identify potentially limiting beliefs? Well, the first thing that you need to do is you need to, you need to understand who you are as a person at the core. You know, one of the first mm -hmm. questions I ask people is, uh, who are you? Who are you? And then people will go on to say, well, just like I did at the beginning of this uh, interview, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a performance coach, or they define themselves by what they do. And then they define themselves about how they do it. Mm -hmm. And that essentially, those two things are not who they are. Yes. Okay, so I... My first thing with people is to help them to identify who they are at their core, the truth of who they are. And when they discover the truth of who they are at their core, they often find that those limiting beliefs, they can start to challenge them at a, at a deeper level and then, and then fundamentally move past them. Yeah. Mm. What do you think are some of the most common limiting beliefs that people have? Well, I, I think that the most common li limiting beliefs are um, uh, equate to what people think that they are capable of achieving in life, you know? Yeah. So, you know, you get, you get, I mean, that, that's in their career, that's in their finances, that relates to uh, the kind of partnerships that they, they um, choose to enter. I mean, when I, yeah. when I, when I first, uh, <laughs> you know, when I was going through the whole bodybuilding thing and I was insecure, I didn't know who I was. I mean, I had some horrendous, relationships based on my level of self-worth you know I, I was mm. i was i was choosing people who i thought you know i was worthy of and at, at the end of the day it just doesn't work out so you know you've got to get to the core of who you actually are and mm. you know and when you when you find that truth the world just opens up for you you know amazing yeah and do you remember that point when when you found that you, you say about when you were bodybuilding and you went through was it after that period you found that yeah you know although bodybuilding was a vehicle for me it wasn't the right vehicle for me ultimately so mm -hmm. uh, you know i had an accident which uh, ripped both of my quadricep muscles off my kneecaps at the same time i fell down one step wow yeah it was a horrendous Ouch. yeah so um, i was rushed to a hospital and had to have both my quadricep muscles sewed back onto my kneecaps mm. and while i was lying in hospital the doctor came to me and said well that's it for you my friend no more bodybuilding wow so now i was michael the bodybuilder you know everybody yeah. knew me as this Huge. top 10 usually tied your identity to it yeah yeah now yeah. who was i you know this this crisis mm. you know and then I remember attending a, a, um, a fitness conference and I was sitting in the audience at this fitness conference and these amazing speakers came on stage and they were amazing. They, they were motivating and they were amazing, you know. And then Floyd Landis, I don't know if you remember a guy called Floyd Landis. He was the guy who, who outed Lance Armstrong for the whole steroid thing, you know. He, so he came on stage and, um, excuse me, just have a drink of water. 
And Floyd Landis was the most nervous, scared, timid speaker I'd ever seen in my life. And I, it looked like he, actually, he literally wanted to run off the stage. So I found that contrast quite amazing. And I thought to myself, you know, mm. I should be there. I should be, I should be on that stage motivating and, and helping people. I'd missed my calling. You know, I, I was just this, this bodybuilder who had now lost his identity. Mm. And that's really where I had my big breakthrough in life because I realized that I had so much to give, actually. So that's, mm -hmm. and within four short years, I got a, a contract with the Royal Palace of Monaco to uh, here in South Africa to, to work with all their foundation staff. And to, wow. uh, yeah, yeah, that was quite an interesting story, actually, because I was out to dinner with Prince Albert and Princess Charlene, and I was sitting at, uh, Prince Albert was sitting at the head of the table, and Princess Charlene yeah. was sitting on, on his left, and I was sitting opposite, and my wife was sitting next to Princess yeah. Charlene. And she started talking about the crown, the, the tiara. You know, and, and how everybody thinks that being a princess is the most amazing thing. So wow. I, I, I did. I digested this. You know, I digested this a little bit, and I looked at her and I said, "You know, Princess Charlene, I said, every little girl in the world looks up to you in that tiara as a symbol of hope." And then I just stopped because I saw her face. <laughs> <laughs> and my wife, my wife, like looked at me, <laughs> and then the princess, the princess, like leaned forward over the table, and she said to me, "Do you want a job?" <laughs> wow! <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, please. So that was uh, that was the start of that. And actually, I've just come out of the end of that contract now at the end wow. of of uh, December, uh, two thousand and seventeen. Wow! So, yeah, that what was, experience! Uh, yeah. What was the highlight of that experience? Well, you know, I, I got to travel, obviously, to Monaco a lot. And I got to spend a lot of time with uh, amazing people and learn about all those amazing people. Mm. And being a coach and uh, being an acquisitive coach, I asked a hell of a lot of questions. And the thing that, yeah. the thing that interested me the most about people, especially those very successful people who hang out on those beautiful big yachts, Mm. What's their energy, their passion, yeah. you know, just how they, they conducted their lives and, and uh, yeah. you know, their, 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 their energy. Amazing. So one of my most, one of my most um, dear values that I hold is about how you treat people who can do nothing for you. Absolutely. Um, it's all about that kind of, um, it, you know, it, well, it's essentially that, how you treat people who can do nothing for you. And I think um, you would have had an insight into people that are, um, very well off and privileged and and what what do you take from you know their what did you see humility did you see you know what what did you see ryan to people? be quite honest with you i've seen both yeah um let me start by saying i think prince albert is the most amazing person he is the most down-to-earth yeah. amazing person and he's got everything you could possibly ever wish to have and he's just the most humble soul. I love that guy. But then you do get people who, you know, the new very rich people who've made it soon. And, uh, you know, they just, you know, uh, and those are the kind of people I also found interesting because I wanted to know what made them different from the people who were. But then, you know, the other thing is this that I've learned and I always tell people, you can't judge people's model of the world. You know, mm -hmm. how, they, how they interpret their, their being, what they mm -hmm. project into the world, comes from a set of beliefs that you can't judge because you don't know what their past was, you know. Mm -hmm. No one knew what my past was. And, uh, you know, so don't judge. Don't judge people, yeah. you know. Seek to understand. Yeah, seek to first to understand and then to be understood. Exactly. I always say that. I always say it to my wife before we go into a meeting. Seek to understand. Yeah. Break bread. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah.
So yeah. let's wrap up the, the peak. So we've got physiology, physiology, emotion, action, and K no, stands for knowledge. The knowledge. peak, yeah, the peak of the framework is knowledge. And you know, you know, I thought about your group, and uh, we are always better than yesterday. What is that all about? It's about being better. And what is being better? It's about never adopting a mindset that you think you know everything or you, you can't learn anything more. Yeah. But the main thing is of knowledge. Well, I call it knowledge stroke results, producing results in your life. Because, you know, after you've taken action in your life, the kind of quality of action, you're not always going to get the result that you want. Mm -hmm. But you would have got an education, which is knowledge. Mm. So we are always building, we're always growing, we are always fundamentally um, learning. Mm. I've got, we've got a question for you, Michael. Yes. We've got a question. Is If you're listening, guys, if you've got some questions, drop them in and we'll answer them. Even if you're on replay, we'll, we'll drop in and answer the question. So, Lisa, my wonderful wife, says, Michael, what is your favorite self-development book or audio book of all time? Okay. My most... Okay, favorite one. Wow. You know, if Lisa, thank you for your question. It's a beautiful question. <laughs> I, if I had to take this iPad... I get those questions I, all the I time, know, I know. And it is amazing because, <laughs> you know, I'm, 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 a book, I'm a book addict. I mean, my, you know, I, I think yeah. that there's a constant flow of books into my life. If I had to take you now with this little iPad into my library and show you my library, it's huge. It's just yeah. hundreds of books. But, you know, I, I, going back to what I said earlier about um, physiology and state management, I think the person, and he's had an impact on many people, is Tony Robbins. Yeah. You know, you know, physiology and, you know, it just it fitted, it fitted into what I teach or, you know, like a glove because, you know, his whole state management theory and the cybernetic loop between mind and body. Mm. I, when, I, when I was in London with my sister about 24 years ago was the first time I had access to any sort of personal development books and Tony Robbins was the first book I picked up. And, yeah. you know, if, if you're not into neuro-linguistic programming, you might find that a bit hard reading. And also, there's a lot of work to do. You know, so, yeah. you know, people, people uh, get new, uh, um, the Tony Robbins thing, but they don't take it any further because it's, they don't fundamentally get it. You know, mm -hmm. you have to have sort of, I think you'd have to probably have a little bit of a background in NLP to, mm -hmm. to, to actually take advantage of, of um you know, all his so we've teachings. got Anna Sanborn from, we've got Anna from Sweden who is just qualified in NLP mm. and business coaching. Okay. Not an hi, hi, Anna. How are you doing? <laughs> so, so Anna will know what I'm so, talking about when it comes to managing states uh, and, physio so and physiology. Because I think I've seen that you'd attended a uh, Tony Robbins Unleash the Power Within event in London. Is that right? Yes. In 2000, and, uh, I think it was 2002. 2002, I think, or three, I came to the uh, that big place at Canary Wharf, that beautiful big auditorium. Wow! And uh, we did the fire walk actually, and I, I and I, I always tell the story because I walked out of that auditorium and I saw all those coals burning outside, and I thought to myself, well, where can I hide? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I actually got myself to do it but it was terrifying you know until I actually got there because you know he teaches you how to manage your state it's just a metaphor for breaking through fear and uh, mm. I mean it's a wonderful metaphor and I mean I'll, I'll never forget those lessons it was amazing was that was that he talks about that being a life-changing event was it life-changing for you <laughs> it was one of my life-changing events I must say uh, yeah. you know I, I got yeah. myself to do it you know and I often think to myself, would I be able to dive out of an airplane now? And I think that would be pushing it a bit too far for me. I, I like to keep my feet on the ground. Have you ever done that, right? <laughs> Have you ever dived out of an airplane? I haven't, but I think I would. Would I you? Think I would. Okay, that's yeah. interesting. Well, why not? Yeah. I tried anything once. Okay. Well, you know, the thing with skydiving is you might only get to try it once. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, and mm. and I think I think it's interesting that you talked uh, at your last one about being knowledge because you'll know well that Tony Robbins says that knowledge isn't power, 
knowledge is potential, potential power. power. Correct. Unless you and act like on the it. Fact, exactly. And I like mm. the fact that it comes after action Correct. in your framework. Exactly. Yeah. So, you it's know, like, it's, it's, it's interesting that I call myself a peak performance life coach because everybody thinks, oh, he just is, calls himself a peak performance life coach. But that framework has a very deep meaning in my life. It spans mm-hmm. right back to my childhood and uh, how that whole, you know, that whole transition and that, all those experiences. Mm-hmm. You know, I think, I think one of your questions was what makes a good coach? Yes. And I think a great coach is somebody who's been in the hole themselves in their life. And when they see Mm. somebody else in the hole, they don't stand at the top and shout down instructions. They get into the hole with the person and lift them out. That is a good coach. Apart from being somebody Mm. who has an intrinsic love for other human beings and somebody who's able to be extremely present with people. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I share with, you know, I, I wouldn't look back at my life and my childhood as, as any terrible adversities. I've, I've had challenges like most, but mm. I think the one thing that connects me most with what I love from coaching is about confidence. Yeah. And if I look back at my life and, you know, there's so many times when people would refer to me as arrogant. I was just trying to be confident. You know, I had so little self-belief growing up yeah. that I almost overcompensated and got out there and was telling people about how great, you know, and I, I, you only kind of look back at it now and you think, Oh God, you know, and that's why I'm so passionate about kind of helping. Um, you know, first of all, people find their self-belief and confidence, you know? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I can absolutely relate. It gives you that sense of drive and purpose. And, and like, like you said, I don't want to ever see anybody that doesn't believe in themselves or confidence because, you know, if I can help them see the greatness within them, then, you know, and you're doing a great yes, job. A, you almost feel compelled to help. <laughs> For sure. Oh, isn't that's it, very, yeah. that's isn't very it, kind of you. Yeah. Isn't it amazing, you know, uh, how we, we come from our unique backgrounds and we project that mm. into the world, you know, whatever. And, and that's why I think that, you know, people need to understand that your gift to the world is your, is your past and what you've been through. Because there are going to be mm. people behind you who are trying to deal with those sort of things and you can help them. You know, um, working with the Palace of Monaco in South Africa, their job as a foundation was to stop drowning. And there's such a big need here in South Africa in the rural communities. And uh, at one point, my wife got terribly overwhelmed about how much work there is to do. And I said to her, you know what? If you just help one person, how important is your life to you? So if you just help one person in this whole world, that's where you start. One person Mm. at a time, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Can't agree with you more. One person at a time. I think I've had similar conversations with Adam Boca, who's, who's in watching at the moment, you know, changing the world one person at a time. Yeah. Absolutely. This is, I'm having, I'm having a lot of fun, Michael. This is great so far. And I, I hope that those people watching are enjoying the content. And if you are finding any value, then please do share it with people that need to see this. And, and if you've got any questions, then do jump on and ask them. Um, so with, with, cause I know you mentioned about always better than yesterday and, and, and what it means to you. How are you always better than yesterday? You know, Ryan, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a ridiculously passionate learner. I, I just, you know, I'm going to France in three week, in, next week. I'm going to France for three weeks for a little holiday with my family. And the first thing that goes, into, the first thing that goes into my bag are books. And the first thing I do when I arri- arrive in Paris is I go into the biggest bookstore I can find and see if there's anything yeah. I've missed, you know. And <laughs> and then I, I look for online stuff and, uh, you know, I'm always, you know, if, if I'm at the gym and I'm cycling or doing my cardiovascular work, it's always podcasts. It's always, it's just mm-hmm. learning. You know, my car doesn't, doesn't move without petrol yeah. or fuel and something in the CD that's going to help me to, you know, yeah. to develop. Absolutely. And then also. Why, why, yeah. so, so for those of you, so, for, so I completely get it. I completely, I'm, I'm exactly right there. I can't go five minutes down the road without listening to some form of, um, audio book or podcast so for those of you that that's an alien concept to them what um why do you do that why do i do that 
Mm. You know, I just think the world is such a beautiful, fascinating place. And I just think, you know, it's, it comes from my love of people and my, my, um, mm. my, my want to help. Um, yeah. You know, I just want to be one of those people who, who can offer a solution when it's needed. You know, that's, that's my objective in life. You know, I, I, if somebody comes to me and they've got a challenge, I want to be able to be that person who can, who can guide them in the right direction. Yeah. Um, and I guess that learning has to be compatible with what you are as a person. I mean, if you get some people who are just, they don't get personal development. They don't get it, you know. Um, one of those people is my wife. <laughs> she doesn't, she, you know, she's, she's just the most amazing person. She's, she's she fundamentally got everything. She's just, you know, she just doesn't get personal development. She says to me, uh, what do I have to develop, you know? So, but, mm -hmm. but she's passionate about other things, which she, she wants to yeah. learn about, obviously. So that's fine, you know. And how, long, how long have you been together, if you don't mind me asking? Well, uh, Dom was a, my wife, Dominique, was an international triathlete. She was a world-class world, a world -class triathlete, actually. And uh, we've been together for 12 years now. Yeah. So we, it's fine. It's fine because my wife and I have been together 15 years. And in her 13th year, she discovered self-development. So next year's the year, okay? <laughs> next year is the year. <laughs> no, we live in hope. <laughs> yeah. Lucky 13 for you. Yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. Maybe she'll discover it while we're uh, away and she sees me passionately paging through, you know. This is it. We almost, we almost it. have to sit on our hands when we're on holiday, don't we? Yeah, and, and, and she's actually commented, my wife's commented, said it was finding something that she loves to do, kickstarted her into personal development. Yeah, very. that's very, very true. So, you know, um, what, what sort of angle, um, how does she mean finding something? So... Um, so she is a, a network marketer. So right. she does unique, and um, so she's a makeup brand. And yeah, it's all about. Um, it, it, again, it's not at the superficial level of, of selling makeup. It really is a grow yourself, grow your business type of venture. Okay. Um, so wow. they do a lot of um, mindset and, oh, okay. and leadership right, development. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's that interesting. Good. I'm really excited. And, and it's interesting, if we reflect that back to what we talked about earlier around your identity being a bodybuilder, mm -hmm. you know, if she, I'm sure she won't mind me saying, but her identity had become uh, a wife and a mum. Sure, yeah. And this circle of, well, who am I? Exactly. And, and her makeup, had, uh, her unique business mm -hmm. had given her that platform to rediscover who she was. Mm -hmm. And in finding that, you know, it's that personal growth, isn't it? It's addictive. You Absolutely. want to keep growing, yeah. keep developing. Yeah. But I must, I must say, just going back to what you said now, don't you find it fascinating asking that pe asking people the question, "Who are you?" I, I find that mm. so because it, it almost throws people, you know, oh, people oh, they, yes, they, they, they become they become quite uncomfortable with that question because, you know, they're searching for who they are. You know, I'm a mother. I'm a father. I'm a I'm a CEO, I'm this, I'm that, I'm that. That's how they define themselves, you know? Yeah. And then they go on to define how they do that, you know? I'm, I'm good at it. Yeah. I'm, you know, if you're a criminal, you're bad, you know, whatever the situation is. But they never get to the core of who they are. Yeah. You know, so, so for me, that's, that's the start of, of, of finding out the truth, you know? When we yeah. know the uh, truth, and, you know, the truth actually, yeah, it's no. so true what they say. The truth sets you free, you know, once. Absolutely. You know. And, and like where you've got your framework around, you know, I, I have my own that, I'm, that I've developed and that is a lot around developing kind of who you are. And it's, it starts with the kind of, we, I think you've alluded to it around the Simon Sinek golden circle. You, you kind of, why it starts uh, yes. with, yeah. you know, what, what do you love to do? Mm -hmm. What are you good at? Mm -hmm. What's important? You know, that kind of having a good sense of a purpose really kind of strong values and you know your strengths those three are the inner game that you talked about starting confidence within and self-belief within that's my framework it starts within and, and this is why what I hear from you is just like music to my ears because it's like you're absolutely you know where I love to be in terms of you know the approach sure absolutely it's an amazing framework I'd like you to share that with me sometime if you can yeah yeah, yeah my I'd pleasure I'd like yeah. to get a good insight that's awesome. And it's amazing right. how that's come from your past, you know, yeah. from, from where you were. It's, it's come through quite beautifully. And now you've developed that framework. 
how long have you been, if you don't mind me asking, in, in, yep. in personal development and uh, or had a passion for? Um, so by accident, probably personal development, I just naturally built a habit. I think curiosity started okay. my personal Okay, that's always a good start. I've always just had this. <laughs> yeah, I've always been curious little monkey. So I've always been trying to figure out people. I'm passionate about understanding people and why people do things. Mm. Um, and then really sort of, um, when I started to nail the personal development was when I came across Simon Sinek's Start With Why. Yes. Um, and getting clear on my own sort of purpose, but also as I was developing as a leader through my, my role at work as well, sort of getting that reflective nature really nailed and, you know, learning different models, different approaches and reflecting on my approach. So that, that's kind of been whilst I've been doing it probably 12 to 15 years, I think the last five I've really upped the purposeful um, self-development. Right. Okay. Does that make sense? Sure. Absolutely. So your, your book that made the turning point for you in your life would have been that Simon Sinek's book. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay. Funny. I haven't read that book. Can you believe it? No. Well, hopefully you've been inspired to go uh, and get it. I am. I'm going to go and get it. <laughs> yeah. I'd say, I'd say why it's changed my life. It's changed my life because A, it's helped me find my own purpose. But in doing so, it's given me the courage to be authentic with it. Mm. And if I hadn't, I wouldn't have been sat here talking to awesome people like you. Absolutely, sure. And that in itself is it's life changing for me because mm. I, I love what I do and I enjoy what I do. Yes, um, I can see that. And it, it's, only the, it's only the start, you know, mm. it's only the start. Yeah, so. for sure. Uh, you know, I love passionate people. Eh? I, I just think that passion drives the world, you know. So uh, it's just, uh, it's amazing that I can sit here in South Africa and you can be on the other side of the world and we can have this conversation. I think that, you know, the world's just moving at such a, a beautiful direction, you know. It's exactly, I think there's a lot of talk about social media being negative and I, my view is about is how you use it and what you surround it with. If you surround it with inspiring, uplifting people and uplifting content and your discipline with your time, then social media should absolutely work for you, not against you. Agreed 100%. You know, it's like money, yeah? You know, it's got its, you know, it's, it's what you do with it that counts. <laughs> absolutely. Michael, this has been an absolute pleasure. I'm just going to give you the opportunity to wrap up. Is there anything else that you would like to you say? To i tell you what, mm. how should people find out more about you? Well, the first place to go would be to my group, which is the Peak Performers Movement. It's a yeah. group that I've got. Uh, I'd, I'd love to have you all there or whoever wishes to join. Um, you're on there. Definitely. So, um, you know, we do our best to keep uh, providing you with uh, up-to-date resources and an education and um, um, just, you know, the commentary from the other great members that are there and, yeah. and insights from uh, all other personal development leaders that I've uh, connected with over the last couple of years. You know, social media ma has made it possible for us to connect with some amazing people, you know. So, yeah. and within these groups that are being established at the moment, uh, you know, we get to connect and, 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 um, and live at a level, you know, similar to what we used to fantasize about, you know, the Tony Robbinses and all of that. We can live at that level, <laughs> you know, in terms of how yeah. we connect with each other, not physically being those people, you know. We, as, you said, as you said earlier, we've got to be as authentic We've got to show up authentically. Absolutely. Yeah. It's about good conversations, inspiring you to do things you maybe wouldn't have had the chance to do if we hadn't have Absolutely. done that. For sure. And I hope that that's happened for a few people that check in and log in tonight. If we've inspired one or two people yeah. to, to go and try something different, to, to pick up a book or try an audio book for the first time, then I think you and I will have, will have uh, had a, you know, a worthwhile time doing this. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Michael, it's been an absolute privilege. Thank you so much for your time. I look forward to continuing to be a member of your peak performance movement. Likewise. It's a great valuable community. Thank, thank, you, you, thank mate. you, I'm going to drop, drop it off now. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Ryan. God bless all of you. Take care. Take, take care, brother. Bye-bye. There we go. Wow. Wow. What a man. What a man. What a story. Um, I hope that this has added you some value. I hope that, um, you know, I'm nerding out on this stuff. I'm absolutely dumbfounded by the fact that, you know, I touched on it then, you know, found my own why, found my own purpose and 
by living that and by being authentic with with what I believe and what I stand for, I'm connecting with some amazing people. I'm having the time of my life. This is amazing. You know, this is only episode three. I've got some <laughs> I've got some amazing people lined up to come. Um, I'm having a great time. If you're enjoying this too, by all means, please do share, add your comments. I know I've said that a few times. Um, yeah, get it, get into Michael's Peak Performance Movement Group um, and see some more content from that amazing man. I just feel so privileged and blessed and I'm glad that I can share it all with you. Amazing. Anna, Adam and the rest of the guys from the Always Better Than Yesterday community, I appreciate your support as always. You guys are an inspiration to me. Um, and uh, yeah, amazing. Have a great week. Take some time to think about what would make a great week for you. Just five minutes. What would make a great week for you? And go and make that happen. Have a great one, guys. Much love.